Welcome to Hoggett School. My name is Glenn Sybil, and I'm presenting the, the, the a program called 1860s What's in Your Lunchbox. As you can see, I'm in the Hoggett School itself. It's a beautiful, restored 1860s one-room schoolhouse. It was the first one, the first schoolhouse in Ames. Today we're going to be doing three basic recipes, but I'm only going to demonstrate two, and you're welcome to follow along with me and bake with me if you would like. You, all, you can probably guess by now there is no electricity in this, in this room and so we're not going to have a stove to bake things. But we are going to mix things and I will demonstrate how to do that. Bread was the staple item for, their, for the school lunches for the 1860s children. They could not go to the general store or any place and buy it so they had to make it in their homes. They would either grind the wheat or have somebody else grind it for them or purchase it ground and to make the bread. So this would be sliced up, and they might have lard on it, they might have homemade butter on it, they might even have some jam on it. And it would be put in the bottom of their lunchbox. The lunchbox might look something similar to this. It'd be something tin like this. Remember that there were no um, aluminum wrap, there was no plastic wrap, so it was just wrapped in brown paper like the paper you get at a grocery store when you have uh, grocery bags, wrap in there and put in their, in their lunch box for lunchtime. Also remember, no peanut butter, it has not been invented yet. To start with the honey wheat bread, I like to use a wooden spoon and a sturdy bowl. I already pre-measured these things so you can't just dump normal, just dump things in it. You have to actually measure things. And so I have one and a half cups of warm water. Warm water like you would use when you're washing your hands. Not, not hot scalding and not cold. To that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of instant yeast. Now, the pioneers, of course, did not have store-bought instant yeast. The, and then you mix that. They would have had to make their own yeast from wheat and water. I tried that last year, and my bread got about this high. So I'm assuming there was a special trick that this old man does not know. I'm adding a fourth a cup of honey to our yeast and water mixture. I'm going to stir that really carefully to make sure it gets going good. This is instant yeast, so I didn't have to proof it first. You may have made breads that you have to proof uh, and set it aside for five minutes, but this one does not require that. And then we're going to have a fourth cup of softened butter. The best way to soften your butter is to set it on the kitchen counter the night before you want to use it. And then it's really soft without having it all melted and goopy and globby. Okay, now, the butter itself may be kind of bunchy yet, but it'll get all mushed up. Don't worry when we do the flour. To that I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of just plain salt. Almost all breads have salt in them. I have to check my ingredients here. And then, this is where it comes fun because I have whole wheat flour here, which is purely made from uh, the whole wheat kernel, the, the, the wheat berry ground up. So it has the bran and the germ and all the things in it. Um, the recipe I have here calls for four cups of whole wheat flour. Well, I have experience in the past that if you put that much whole wheat flour in it, it's going to taste fairly heavy and fairly strong. And if you're not accustomed to making a lot of bread, you might want to do what I'm doing today in doing half and half. So it's important to get two cups of the flour really developed and well mixed in there because once you get the last two cups in, it changes consistency a lot. Now, most of you, if you're cooking with your mother, she would probably slap your hands by now because I'm using my hands to level off the flour. Sorry about that, moms, I'm a messy cook. Anyway, you're supposed to use a knife and do all that fancy stuff. I just, um, I'm a quick and messy cook, so that's what you get. So now, as you can see, 
it's sort of incorporating all of the flour and I'm spilling all over it, and that's okay. Um, don't do this in the living room, obviously. And so it's in a, in a little bit, it'll be all, oops, <laughs> it'll be all mixed up. And then it'll become very, very sticky. And that's when the fun begins. Okay, now, as you can see, it's kind of pulled away from the sides of the bowl, and it's not quite so sticky anymore. So then, this is the fun part. You do have to have floured hands for this. You scrape off the spoon with your hand, and then you bunch the, 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 the bread together, and you put it on your board, and as you can see here, I'm putting a bunch of flour down here because if you don't, it'll all stick to the board and you won't have anything but one big pile of mess. Okay? So now comes the really fun part. It's called the kneading part. And as you can see, I'm just pushing and pulling and punching. This is a good thing to do, especially after your sister has kicked you and you got in trouble for hitting her. This is a good way to get out all that frustration. And as it gets really, really soft, oops, <laughs> sorry, as it gets really, really soft, I mean, it's, it's going to get all sticky and gooey to my board there. What you do is you add a little more flour. You're probably going to add a half a cup to three-fourths of a cup of flour to this in order to get it really in the consistency you want. Now, the, the recipe says to knead this for 10 minutes. Well, I'm not sure I've ever kneaded any bread for 10 minutes, but as you can see, this is the fun part. I will be back in a little bit once I finish kneading and, sh kneading and show you the next step. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, the bread is looking good. It's elastic -y, kind of. We go by feel probably more than anything else. So what I'm going to do next is I'll put a little oil in this pan, and you can see I didn't clean it up. There's no need to clean it up. Just use the same bowl you mixed with, unless you really like to do dishes a lot, but I don't. And then you place it in there, and then you take I take a kitchen towel and cover it, and put it in a warm place. What you want to do right now is you want to look how big it is because we're waiting for it to rise or get twice this size before we go on to the next step. And so it's kind of hard to remember sometimes, but to kind of get an eyeball picture of how big it is. Then I'm going to set this aside and we'll start the next thing. Our second recipe for today is called soda bread. And this is a soda bread that I made. It looks a little different than most soda breads because it's following a very, very old recipe. The recipe is from Isabella Beaton in 1861. And the original recipe said, for every two pounds of flour, allow, or add I guess, one teaspoon of tartaric acid, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of carbonic a carbonic of soda, and two breakfast cupfuls of cold milk. Now before, I, of course, I went to Google and tried to figure out all this stuff was, somebody nicely translated the recipe to us. And so what it really is, is two and a half cups of white flour, As you can see, you're going to have to sweep the floor and, the, and clean the counter after you finish. Oops, let's not get that too bad. And then um, the tartaric acid ended up being um, cream of tartar. You may or may not have that in your cabinet. Always thought, what do you use cream of tartar for? Well, I guess we use it for, so, for soda bread. And it takes one half teaspoon of this. I have to put the lids on or it'll spill all over the floor. And then one half teaspoon of salt. 
then of course we need to mix that up very well first so that it, it has, it has all, it's very, very blended. And then it said two cups of milk. Now, if you know your measurement, you know that, oops, one pint is two cups. And I hope that you aren't as messy as I am. To that, we're going to add one half teaspoon baking soda. This is regular baking soda, like you would use for cakes and cookies in your home. And the recipe said to mix this in very well because we want to get the baking soda kind of starting to do some action here. So I'm gonna mix it well. Pour it in there. And then the next thing you might think of, this doesn't look like bread. It really doesn't. It looks more like pancake batter to me. But we're going to mix it up well. So if you, if you want to make this recipe, I would encourage you to try it. But if you want to make more of a traditional soda bread recipe, you might want to look in your cookbooks for a, a more contemporary version because as you can see this one got pretty low and flat it's not very very fluffy okay so once this is mixed well you put it in a five by nine regular baking pan regular loaf pan pour it in there and then it's sort of like cake batter I guess And then you would bake it immediately. This bread does not need to rise. This bread does not need to do anything but simply be baked for 50 minutes in your oven, okay? And I think soda bread probably is the best eaten the same day that you make it because it is best fresh. After a while, I will cut into this to show you the inside of it. The Hoggett children would have eaten more than just plain bread all the time. Once in a while, they would have had a dessert. Not often, because sugar wasn't that common, but one of the desserts they would have had would have been this little bitty cookie. You might think, oh, yum, chocolate cookie. No, it's really not chocolate cookie. It gives us dark color and strong flavor from molasses. And molasses is the leftovers after the commercial people boil the sugar beets or the sugar cane and all the white crystals float up to the top and this black stuff is what is left. I think molasses is very good. Some people think it's too strong. So these molasses cookies would have been put in the lunchbox as a special treat. Um, you can make them um, small and, and really hard and firm and then dunk them in milk. Some people like that. I like mine big and chewy, and so that's why I made them this way. It's, the recipe says to make them about the size of a walnut, which, which is, makes a lot of sense. Again, this would have been a special treat. They didn't have dessert every lunchtime. They probably didn't have dessert every day, maybe once a week at the most, because they were busy doing other things and they didn't have time for all those wonderful treats. But if you want to make these, the, the, the recipe that you see is a contemporary version of the recipe. The old fashioned recipes are really hard to, to follow, so I put a contemporary version of that in there. Well, let's check on our bread. It's almost twice the size, almost. And so I'm gonna pretend it is twice the size, okay? And this is another fun thing, children, it's really fun to do. You get a, give it a good hard punch and then lift it out and you can see it's kind of oily because we put oil on the, in the bowl and it is much bigger than when we had it before. We're going to try to have the top smooth as we can and then we're going to tuck it underneath like you would your, tuck your blankets underneath. Make a nice loaf size and then we're going to put it in our pan. Now I've already greased this pan. You can use Pam spray or another commercial spray. You can use oil or you can use butter, whatever you have, okay? So that will be there. And then in another 30 minutes or so, that'll be ready for me to pop in the oven and have fresh bread for dinner tonight. 
So let's look at the breads we've made. First, we have this is this, okay? This is how big it gets. Now, if it doesn't get this big, don't be upset. Just try again, okay? And so I'm going to cut into it to show you what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, it's brown like wheat bread, and it looks great, and it smells fabulous. If you really want to treat better than Snickers, you bake this bread, let it sit on the counter for about 30 minutes to cool off, you take a slice, you put some fresh butter on it, and it is the best treat you can possibly imagine. Delicious. Let's check out our soda bread. A little rubbery. Okay, so this soda bread looks very different and it is um, a little bit dense in the bottom. I have not tried this, so if you, if you were going to try it, you might want to um, take a little less milk in it or put a little more flour in it because it looks a little bit heavy, but it smells great and it smells like soda bread. And then if if you if you want an all whole wheat bread, this is a slice of bread from one of our downtown bakeries. They grind the wheat themselves and use only whole wheat and honey for their bread along with the yeast and salt, of course, and water. And so this is a, a very dense, rich bread. It's going to be heavier than this bread yet, this because this has part white bread in it. But whatever you do, it'll turn out great and it'll be delicious. And so I wish you well. Enjoy and happy baking.